Do not fuse Wixwell. He is why, man. I've got all of the champs, all of the Terexes ready to go, minus a few of them that still need a little bit of levels to fuse Wixwell right now, but I'm not gonna do it. Why am I not gonna do it? Let me tell you something, man. There's a clan versus clan stand tomorrow. <laughs> That's why I'm not gonna fuse Wixwell just yet. In 12 hours, the clan versus clan is going to start. And from the clan versus clan, fusing champions, acquiring new champions uh, via a fusion such as Wixwell, is going to get us a whole bunch of free points. Now, not only that, but I've also got a few of the Terexes just at the bottom here. If I just drag them up that you can see are still level 1 just on down at the bottom. I'm not going to level these guys up to 40 just yet. Again, I'm going to wait for the Clan vs. Clan just because there is a 2x point bonus for clearing campaign stages in tomorrow's Clan vs. Clan event. So just be ready for that, and that's when we're going to blast these guys up in the campaign stage. And uh, yeah, get them up to 40 and we will get Wixwell tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. But hey, man, how did the Wixwell fusion go for you? Drop it down below. Did you skip out on the Wixwell fusion? Did you mess something up and lose the chance to get your hands on this absolute bearded wonder? Or is it all going grand for you? Have you already fused him? Are you saving uh, fusing this guy until the clan versus clan starts? Let me know how it went, man. Now, who will I be six starring next? The best and most popular question in Raid Shadow Legends, man. During the champ training tournament, I, of course, maxed up Estrid Dreamsong. She's currently level 55. We got Magna up to 6 star as well. He's level 51. Frozen Banshee, 47. So, just got to max these guys out a little bit over the few days to come. That's going to be part of my plan, is just to farm up masteries on these guys for their last few levels so that they're earning experience from Minotaur and the mastery scrolls from Minotaur at the same time. It's going to be nice and efficient. What are my cats doing? And yeah, as well as farming masteries, part of what I want to be doing is just recovering my account a little bit, man. Because my god, when it comes to like my potions, for example, I'm so low on the lower tier uh, void affinity potions here, as you can see. Super, super low on these suckers. My green potions, I'm lagging the, uh, lacking the big boys uh, in the superior potions. And same for the arcane pots as well, man. It's just a little bit lacking. I like to have my potions all in order, just in case I want to take part in the next month's fusion. That might be really, really tough, though, because my account is running dry. It's a bit toasted in terms of sacred shards. And when I say a bit, I mean, oh, if we just drag this up, I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're on a flat zero. <laughs> so while theoretically, I might be able to take part in next month's fusion, might, just because I have so many primal shards and void shards ready to go, I might be able to get my way through another, you know, Summon Rush Champion Chase style event. It might be doable. It'll be tough. Summon Rush events in particular are a real pain to get through without some sacred shards in the bank, man. So I might just be skipping next month's fusion, man. Just recover my potions, recover my shards a little bit, farm up some masteries, right? Gotta get that done. Uh, whenever you can take the opportunity to do that. And hey, man, I just want to say as well, my account resources have actually, I feel, pretty good and a pretty good spot for an account that's literally like a hundred days old like a little over three months old you know i just want to mention that if you are a newer player that maybe signed up to the game using the promo link from this channel uh and you're and you're still like a beginner player yourself and you don't quite have the resources that this account does after a similar amount of time you're thinking oh my god am i really really far behind like what is this how is how is cob doing all of this dude i played this game i'm blasting the hell out of raid man not a day goes by where I don't wake up, spend all my energy, spend it all again in the middle of the day, complete every single quest. Like, I never miss a beat in this game, you know? And it's for the channel, you know? I want to keep on progressing the account at a nice and steady rate. So unless you're sinking your life and soul into Raid Shadow Legends, into competing in events that you really shouldn't be competing in just yet, like I have been, you know, to get your hands on Primal Shards and things like that, then don't be too dissatisfied with your progress, okay? And you know what, speaking of new players, while we're at it, if you're looking to start off a new Raid Shadow Legends account, or you know somebody who is, then go ahead and click on the promo link down below at the top of the video description, man. Doing so will jumpstart your new account with a free Epic Champion and a whole bunch of starting freebies, man. It's the best way to start off your Raid adventure, man. So there you go. Pass it on to somebody who needs it, even if you don't quite need it yourself. So, all right, man. All of that said, we've still got to plan out which champs we're going to be taking up to six stars next. Very, very important to always have a plan when it comes down to that. Of course, we're going to be taking care of Estrid, Dreamsong, uh, Magna, and Banshee. Getting those up to max soon. But who's going to be coming after that? Before champ training tournaments and champion training events roll around, we've got to know these things, man. We've got to have these plans laid out. Now, I've got a bunch of champs that I took up to 50 that are just going to be there for a while. Uh, that got outscaled quicker than I was anticipating. War Maiden is like the biggest example of this, right? She brings that strong version of decreased defense. But at the same time, 
we got the Lessia. She does the same job, but better. Uh, you know, so I ended up just kind of maxing out the Lessia first and War Maiden. Uh, sort of just got left by the wayside a little bit. And so I think she's going to be staying to 60 for a while. Same with a lot of these guys. I think the first 60 champs... Actually, I'm going to cover the champ I'm most excited to, uh, to take up to 60 first. Because, dude, we're going to be maxing out Magna very, very soon. Getting all the way up to 60. This guy is just... Man... This guy is a juggernaut in arena, right? Slaps. One of the best epic arena nukers in the game. So I'm really, really excited to have this guy on side. Now, another champ that I'm pretty hyped to take into the arena is actually an epic champ that I underestimated a bit when I first pulled him. That is Skullcrusher, man. This guy, and honestly, his arena scores are very good as well, right? Arena defense, 4.8. Pretty nice, man. Offense, not so great. But having this guy maxed out, he probably won't be my next level 60, just to be clear. But having him maxed out and getting to uh, ruin some people's day on defense, uh, on arena, would be pretty cool. Why am I so excited for him? Okay, his A1's a little bit of heal reduction. Fair enough, you know. His A2, dude, look at this. Ascended skill, 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champ for two turns. And places counterattack buff on all allies except this champ for two turns. Also unkillable buff on this champion. This guy is hard to bring down, man. But... Most important thing here, one skill tome, you get lucky with this, skill tome into this, three turn cooldown, we're talking permanent counter attack and ally protection buff on your arena team. Very, very nice indeed. Now, why am I additionally excited for this? Well, we somewhat recently got our hands on a whole bunch of bolster gear via the forge pass, and man, I rolled some bits of this that look really, really saucy all the way up to- oh god, you, you guys can't see the stats, right? Oh, God damn it! Okay, one second. There it is, man. Dude, we rolled up some of these bolster pieces just because the stats on these bits were so juicy. So during the uh, most recent artifact enhancement event, I needed to make up like a thousand points or something to finish it up. And so I did so on these bolster pieces. Dude, look at the rolls on these, man. Pretty sweet. Sadly, the weapon went into a lot of accuracy, which we actually don't need on uh, Skull Crusher. So I might sift through another weapon and find a alternative over there but a lot of percentage health rolls on this helmet for example speed even resistance is fine i guess um shield percentage hp rolls not bad decent just going back to the helmet real quick i think there's another along here there it is man percentage defense percentage hp just making skull crusher absolutely unkillable we did get some speed boosts they're only blue quality but even still the rolls are okay on these as well i think that we can make a a pretty reasonable giga chad arena tanky counter-attack style nerd out of school crusher man it's gonna be quite fun man to build this guy up before there is only one champ that we're really gonna be maxing up next realistically it's probably gonna be bevald just a very very good legendary provoker right uh, we're also gonna have our hands on wixwell he's gonna be an obvious next choice to take up to 60 as well in fact i'm just leveling the crap out of a lot of tanks i think right because i think that also really high on the list is also gonna be sepulka sentinel just because of how good and reliable she feels into clan boss actually will i need her into clan boss because she brings a decreased attack debuff on the a1 which is somewhat reliable uh, as far as a1s go but decreased attack pretty good she brings some debuff removal or rather like block debuffs increased defense but so does wixwell wixwell brings a more reliable decreased attack and the strong version of decreased defense and a lot more so maybe i don't need sepulchre sentinel the clan boss anymore passive is really really good as well 25 percent chance of uh, blocking damage but wixwell brings huge barriers like huge shields maybe i don't need to max out sepulchre sentinel anymore wixwell has just like came in and just took her job before she even showed up for the interview you know what i'm saying that's a little bit sad but yeah those are the champs that i'm pretty darn excited about taking up to 60 next also somewhat high ish on the list i guess is uh is gonna be dark Ethel, just because i think that she's really really cool Actually, she's very good anyway. I don't know. Epic Nuka. I've got a soft spot for Dark Earthel, man. Anyways, we treat for you guys who stayed all the way to the end. Hey, man, if you haven't already, go ahead and use our happy little promo code. Game Leap helps to support the channel and all of that good stuff. It will also earn you, in case you're wondering, 10 free experience brews, free energy refill, and 100,000 silver. Some of you guys actually mention every now and then that the code Game Leap is invalid. That actually means that you just input it already. Like maybe you found it on another website or another content creator covered it or something like that. But there you go, man. If you haven't used it, there it is. All right, that is going to be all for me for today, boys. Just a quick account update, really. Nice and chill video. It's actually my, my birthday today, so I'm taking it a little bit easy in raid today. Seeing as though, look, we've basically got the fusion done. And um, yeah, just going to have a chill evening, man. 
do please enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are, wherever you're viewing from. Remember to hit like, comment, and subscribe on the video. And if you're looking to start a new raid account, as always, make sure to do so by clicking on the promo link down below at the top of the video description. And now, thanks for watching, and I'm going to catch all of you guys just a tad bit later, man.